In thermal flight, as the name suggests, we need thermals to gain altitude. For this to happen, one part of the terrain must heat up more than the rest. In this diagram, let's assume these rocks heat up more than the surrounding ground. This is true, but in reality, we need a larger surface area to generate a thermal. So here, these rocks have warmed up about 3 degrees more than the rest of the terrain, which is enough to create a thermal. The heat accumulated in the rocks will eventually release, generating the thermal. It's important to understand that once a thermal is created, this rising current of warm air has already detached from the ground. It is no longer connected to it. Think of it as a bubble moving upward. The thermal rises, and if atmospheric conditions are unstable, it has the potential to climb thousands of meters. Unstable conditions mean that the temperature of the atmosphere cools as we gain altitude. This cooling allows the thermal to continue rising significantly. On the other hand, if the atmosphere is stable or there is thermal inversion, the opposite happens. The thermal cannot continue rising, meaning we won't gain much altitude. These concepts will be explained further in another lesson. In this example, let's assume the atmospheric conditions are unstable, allowing the thermal to rise thousands of meters. You can think of a thermal as a column or a tube of rising air. Surrounding this tube, there is descending air. Naturally, the air that has risen must go back down, and it does so around the thermal. This descending air is called sink. Sometimes, while flying, we first encounter sink. This isn't necessarily bad, because if we keep moving forward, we may find the lift we are searching for, the thermal. We continue flying, and suddenly, we start gaining altitude. This is a sign that we might be in a thermal. To take full advantage of it, we must make 360-degree turns inside it. This is known as coring a thermal. Unlike ridge lift or dynamic flight, thermal flying tends to be more turbulent and bumpy. It's important to stay calm and understand that this is simply how thermal flight works. The advantage of this turbulence is that it allows us to gain a lot of altitude. A thermal can provide 100 meters, 500 meters, even 2,000 or 3,000 meters of height. With this altitude, we can attempt cross-country flights by moving from one thermal to another, climbing high, gliding to another thermal, and repeating the process. The best way to fly thermals without suffering too much turbulence is to find a good thermal, stay inside it, and core it to the top. Once inside, Flying a thermal can feel extremely smooth and stable. The glider remains solid and is unlikely to collapse. So the best strategy for flying thermals calmly is, one, find a thermal, two, stay inside and core it to the top, three, move to another thermal and repeat the process. Thermal cycles. Since a thermal detaches from the ground and rises, this doesn't mean there is always a continuous column of lift from the ground to the cloud base. It's possible that one pilot reaches a thermal, cores it, and climbs. Meanwhile, another pilot following just seconds later misses the lift because the thermal has already detached, leaving them with only sink. This is why some pilots get frustrated when they see a friend climbing while they themselves bomb out and are forced to land. How to identify thermals. Since thermals are invisible, we use clues to find them. Birds, large birds of prey, such as eagles, hawks, and vultures, rely on thermals to soar without flapping their wings. If you see birds circling in a thermal, follow them. They have already found the lift for you. Clouds. Not all clouds indicate thermals, but cumulus clouds do. These clouds form directly above thermals. If you see a cumulus cloud, chances are there is a thermal underneath it, and that covers the basic theory of thermal flight. Thermals allow us to gain significant altitude and travel long distances. While flying in thermals can be bumpy at times, it is also one of the most rewarding experiences in paragliding. 
I hope you found this lesson useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one.